Jeep is back in the seven seat large SUV game with this all new model. It's the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee and it's first coming to Australia in this L format. It's got a longer wheelbase and a longer body overall and it's got three rows inside and room for seven people. This is an all new model. There's a lot of tech going on. I did have a peek inside earlier. That interior looks very impressive. So there is a lot to get through with this car and in this review, I'm gonna run you through as much as I possibly can. Now it all looks good on first impressions. However, there are a few considerations in this Jeep Grand Cherokee. There is a plug-in hybrid called the 4xE coming next year, but for the time being, you've only got one choice of powertrain. That is a petrol V6. There is no diesel slated for this car at the moment. So that does kind of put it at odds with a lot of the competition, but we're gonna put it through its paces today. We're gonna to take it off-road, on-road, crawl through the interior and see what this thing is like. The next generation Jeep Grand Cherokee is coming to Australia firstly in a seven seat format, which is known as the Grand Cherokee L. This is the first time Jeep has had a seven seat offering since the Commander in 2010. And this model will be followed by a five seat variant with a shorter body and shorter wheelbase. This seven seat variant measures in at around 5.2 meters long and sits on a 3,092 millimeter wheelbase. And it's built atop an all new platform, which is adapted from Alfa Romeo Bones. The range starts from $82,250 before on-road costs, and that's the Night Eagle specification. This one wasn't available for us to drive during the launch event. In the middle of the range sits the Limited variant, and that gets a range of improvements like a bigger infotainment display, heated second row, and driver's memory seat function. This goes from $87,950 before on-road costs. At the top of the range is Summit Reserve, which gets a huge amount of upgrades and additions inside and out. This model also rides on air suspension and those 20 inch wheels grow up to 21 inches. Summit Reserve has a starting price of $115,450 before on-road costs. Seven seats are standard across the range, but only Summit Reserve gets a low range transfer case. And with the height adjustable air suspension, this model also gets increased off-road ground clearance and a better weighting depth. However, the towing capacity does get reduced for top spec. Night Eagle and Limited can tow 2,813 kilos, but Summit Reserve can only do 2,268 kgs. It makes 210 kilowatts and 344 newton meters, which runs through an eight-speed automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive. Fuel consumption is set at a claimed 10.6 liters per 100 k's on the combined cycle. We saw as good as 11.5 liters per 100 during our time with the car on mostly highway driving, but that number did creep up to 13.5 liters per 100 k's after some off-roading. The 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L is arriving in Australian showrooms now and the first examples of customer vehicles will be in the country by the middle of the year. This is the interior of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L and this is the top spec model in what I think is probably the best color. This is like a saddle tan kind of color and there is a lot to like about this new Grand Cherokee. Something for me is this open pore wood feature here. That is genuine wood actually. It adds a air of quality and a premium feel to this interior, absolutely. You've got a 10.1 inch infotainment display here. There's a new operating system behind there. You've got maps, you've got navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all of that stuff in there, and it is quite easy to use. One thing in particular that I did notice about this is the quality of the camera systems in here. They are high quality, you can really see what's going on and that does help in tight situations both off-road and around shopping center car parks and that sort of thing now in this model we've got here you've also got a digital rear view mirror you can turn that on and off pretty easily helps you see what's going on behind you but one thing i have to say there's a lot of piano black going on here so you've got buttons up the top here that controls things like lane departure warning automatic stop start then your climate control buttons down here but this is all piano black i can see after a bit of family usage and that sort of thing after a few weeks this will start to show up dust and grime and fingerprints and will need to be kept cleaned quite regularly i think 
but one thing you won't be running short of is power outlets. There's two USB power points there, two USB C's as well, plus a wireless charging pad and a 12 volt outlet. And there's more power outlets in the back as well. The center console is pretty big and you've got a couple of cup holders there under a lidded compartment. So it's practical and easy to use every day, but it's also got a really nice premium feel. Jeep has clearly spent a lot of time designing this to be a special place. And I've got to say, I'm quite impressed with it. All right, first things first in the second row of this Grand Cherokee L is space. Now, my driving position in front there, I've actually moved the seat a little bit further back because I think I've sit a little bit close to the wheel in comparison to others. But as you can see, there is still a load of leg room on offer, heaps of room for my feet. And although there is a big sunroof here, there's loads of headroom as well. Now these seats have a 60-40 slit, they slide forward and back and they also tilt and that is important because there is a third row back there we will get to that in a minute but for sitting in here a big adult it's very comfy there's big glass windows here if you don't like so much sun you do have uh, blinds in there in the windows dual zone climate control heated and vented seats in this specification so you're really not missing out there and the good thing is all these materials seem to continue on quite nicely there's a couple of cup holders there along with an armrest, but you've got the quilting, you've got the nice Macintosh sound system in this Summit Reserve model. The speaker covers are quite nice. There's a lot of nice attention to detail going on, so you don't feel like you're in the cheap seats just yet. Maybe that will be in the third row, but we'll cover that when we get to it. But if you want space and you want room for a growing family, this definitely fits the bill quite nicely. I'll just show you the access into the third row of this Grand Cherokee. There's one lever here on the top of the seat. You pull that and the seat sort of leans all the way forward to give you pretty good access into the third row here. I'll just jump in. There we go. And I'll pop the seat back. Now, as you can see there, the second row has a little bit of leg room going on there. I've still got a fair amount here. So I could actually even Move that back a little bit more. They've got a stack of leg room and I'm kind of just squeezing in now. I've got a fair amount of headroom going on there. I could move that seat forward a little bit more if I needed to, but this is pretty spacious and comfortable. The floor here is relatively low, so my knees aren't up around my ears. I've got air vents, I've got a USB and a USB-C point and a cup holder. And I do appreciate the fact that Jeep has actually added some of the interior color back here so you don't feel like you've really been put into the uh, bad seats right up the back here and completely forgotten about. There's a decent sized window as well and I've got to say I could be quite happy in here for a reasonable amount of time and parents would appreciate the fact that there is a camera up here as well. They call it fam cam and uh, you can zoom in on what's going on so even if you are right up the back you might still get into trouble if you're playing up. I've got to take my hat off to Jeep on this launch because they've picked out some tracks that are quite overgrown and in very bad condition and we are really putting this new Grand Cherokee to the test. There are some steep sections, there are some pretty gnarly sections. The cars are in places having a bit of a struggle to get through. You can probably hear the car working pretty hard underneath me at the moment. I'm just climbing up something. And what I'm finding is that this Grand Cherokee is definitely capable off-road. If you want to do more regular off-roading, you do want the top spec model because it's got air suspension, it's got a low range transfer case, and it's got a bunch of extra driving modes for you to pick through. So that does make a difference on tracks like these. Unfortunately, that means you've also got 21 inch wheels. So if you want to do regular off-roading, you might have to look at something like an aftermarket wheel to replace so you don't ruin these nice wheels and tires. Although I have to say, the 21s do look pretty good for driving around town. It probably doesn't feel as at home on four-wheel drive tracks as you would find in a Defender or a Land Cruiser, even a Nissan Patrol, for example. The gearing doesn't seem to be as low, and because the way the centre diff and the front and rear differentials all work, it really leans on the traction control system to do the heavy lifting in terms of maintaining forward momentum on harder tracks. There isn't a whole lot of articulation available, especially when you've got that air suspension jacked up to its maximum point. So the car is working pretty hard to get things done at times. And because the engine isn't especially torquey in the lower parts of the rev range, this is just a, a naturally aspirated petrol motor. 
it does flare up a little bit from time to time. So you do need to get to know the car a little bit in terms of the throttle response, the way it reacts to throttle inputs and that sort of thing. But it does get there. And I've got to say, these tracks, you probably see here, these are super overgrown. Fairly challenging tracks as well. And the car has done it. So I've got to take my hat off to the Grand Cherokee and to Jeep Australia because they are letting us really put these cars to the test. The other thing to consider with this powertrain, you do have a 100 litre fuel tank in this Grand Cherokee. However, being a petrol engine, it does tend to use a fair amount of fuel in low speed off-road situations like this. My average started at around 11 litres per 100 before we started doing the off-roading. That was on a lot of highway driving. So that's not a bad average overall, I suppose, but it's creeping up now. We're just near 13.4 litres and that will keep going up the more off-road driving we do. So even though it does have a fairly big tank, your driving range off-road wouldn't be that big. And I've got to say, for the Australian market, this thing would be a lot better with a nice turbo diesel motor, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen. But some of the other higher speed off-road driving we were doing, this Grand Cherokee was quite impressive. It's comfortable, it's nice and stable. The steering, the way it rides and handles bumps is all quite good. The engine probably could use a little bit more power at times. It's not too bad, it definitely gets the job done, but there's a couple of times there where you're going up a hill, maybe you're overtaking, something like that. It does start to feel slightly underpowered, but it's smooth and it's quiet. And the way they've calibrated the transmission overall, it's quite responsive and changes gears quickly to give you that acceleration when you need it. Just doing a three point turn at the moment in this car, the cameras are quite good. And even though it is a big seven seat SUV, there's plenty of room in that third row. It doesn't feel as big as you would find in a Land Cruiser 300 series or a Patrol. And that's an important thing, I think, because let's face it, most people aren't going to be doing tracks like this if they bought this car. They're going to be driving it around town, doing a bit of light off-roading from time to time, I'm sure. But having a car that's a little bit easier to handle in tighter situations definitely pays dividends. And nice big infotainment display here, nice crispy cameras to see what's going on around you. And you've also got a digital rear view mirror, which helps when the boot is fully loaded. So I started off this video with a red limited, but now I've got the top spec summit reserve here. And for me, this is the absolute pick of the range. It's the most expensive car. This is $115,000 before on-road costs and options. So this Grand Cherokee is a lot more expensive than it used to be. However, it is also a lot more car than it used to be as well. There is a lot to like about this thing. Not having a diesel powertrain will hold it back, especially in comparison to some of the key competitors. I'm thinking things like Land Rover Defender and Toyota Land Cruiser. The Nissan Patrol doesn't have diesel power either, but at least it does have a big stonking V8 under the bonnet. This 3.6 litre V6, it gets the job done, sure, and it's good enough, but I reckon this thing could handle a lot more horsepower under the bonnet. Hopefully Jeep does do that in a future model. But for me, the highlight is definitely the interior of this new Grand Cherokee. There's a lot of nice materials going on. There's a lot of technology and great attention to detail. And this thing is a bona fide seven seater. You can fit a lot of human beings in this thing quite comfortably on a long haul drive. So if you are looking for something like a large seven seat SUV that does have a fair bit of off-road capability, maybe you don't need to tow or do a big road trip as much, this thing is definitely worth a look.